All right, cold start on the yellow loader today. It's like 30 degrees, 32 degrees, and it's been starting pretty good in the cold. A little bit of time to get it turned over. It'd be nice if I had a heater on this guy, but that hasn't exactly happened yet. That just seems like a lot of cranking to me. I'm not saying it's like the best mini skid steer out there, the biggest and the most powerful and everything, but it's turned out to be one of those pieces of equipment that I just use a lot. Now I bought this thing first and foremost for tree work. And I'm just gonna show you how it worked out on a job recently. It's actually one of the first jobs I took this beast out on. So I was still kind of getting used to it, getting a feel for the grapple and kind of how it works on the job. It's definitely different using this piece of equipment in comparison to what I usually do, but I kind of got the feel for it. I had plenty of access on this job. It was easy to get in there, but I couldn't get a truck in or a trailer. The ground was just too soft and mushy. So it was kind of a perfect test case to bring the yellow machine in and move some piles of brush out. Plus I was kind of wondering about this grapple. It's not a totally traditional design for a grapple on a mini skid steer. So I was kind of wondering about how it worked. It sort of stabbed into the ground on a few lifts. That was kind of annoying. But otherwise, you know, I felt like I was moving brush pretty good. I probably could have made these piles about twice as big or three times as big, but, but I'll get a feel for that over time. It can actually handle bigger bundles of branches and logs and stuff than I anticipated. You know how it is, working with a machine, you kind of learn the limits, you get up to those limits, and I'm still kind of doing that with this guy. I'm calling that like the manual discharge. Because of the height, it's not perfect for dumping bundles off in the trailer. You know, so I was kind of having to coax things off the grapple into the trailer. So not like a fully automated process, almost like a semi-automated process. Still, it's pretty speedy and definitely easier than my old hand hauling method. At the same time, there's part of me wondering how soft a guy can get standing on a machine like this as opposed to hauling stuff by hand. Working this machine on this job, I'm also wondering to myself the whole time, is speed and ease over the good old fashioned slow hard work, the manual labor, is the machine option actually better? Like quote unquote better. And I would just say it's different. You know, it's faster in some ways, it's easier in some ways, but it's also kind of a hassle. At the end of this job, I had to come back and pick up the machines. So that sense of completion just kind of happens at a different rate. Last thing I'll say about this job is that a bunch of you guys in the comments were saying, dude, you gotta put a counterweight on that machine. You just need more back weight. And that's absolutely true. This thing is just a little bit tippy. The more you load it, the more it tips. So that's still something I'm kind of working on. I want to figure that out in just the right way before I mod this thing in a way that isn't quite, you know, like the best.
Uh, so you've seen this dude out in the trees, but primarily I've been keeping the bucket on it just because it's actually a handy tool for dirt work. This thing holds only a little more than like a single wheelbarrow full of gravel or dirt. So it's not like a massive capacity or anything like that, but it's just been so handy to jump on and work with that it's the thing I just keep going to every time I need to move stuff around. So for instance, we've got some trenches at our place that we recently dug, big old trenches full of like these hot water lines for this outdoor heater system. And the trenches, you know how they are. They start out kind of tall and then they go down, but they don't always go down in the right places. So I had the mini skid out digging, moving stuff around, leveling those trenches. They're not perfect, but better than a shovel is kind of my motto with this machine. It's not the best in mud, but I really don't know a dirt moving machine that is. And when the ground's frozen, it struggles. But like I said, better than a shovel. It's been pretty good for moving dirt around. And it, you know, it's one of those things you gotta get the feel for it. The machine's got some quirks in the controls and the more time you spend on it, you know, the more time you actually just do the work, the more finesse and kind of feel you get for how this thing can actually move the earth. No problem uh, hitting things up with a rake afterwards. My goal here was not to make this perfect. It's not gonna be perfect till stuff thaws out and kind of settles, but just to kind of flatten things down around the heater so we're not like tripping on stuff. All right, now I'm not sure if this is gonna work out, but my goal here is to cut just a little bit of a swale into this hillside. I've got a drain in underneath and that's nice and everything, but I'm just kind of tired of water and sediment filtering this way. So I got a high end back there. This is my low end, hopefully like a foot deeper and just a little swale. Now that's a start. It's at least something to convince me that I need something more dramatic. But for now, at least I got a little bit of a swale. I'm just gonna wait till the rain comes in and see how it kind of behaves. I think we can get some pooling down in there. At that point, I gotta wrap it around the backside and send it down. So some of the other stuff I've been doing with this little yellow devil could best be described as miscellaneous. For instance, I've been using it to move stuff around just in the most general sense. If something looks like it's too big to easily carry, I've basically been tying it onto this thing with whatever kind of rope or strap or chain I've got and just dragging stuff around. It seems kind of beneath a fine piece of equipment to simply use it for moving stuff but that's what i've been doing just using it for moving stuff from tractor tires big boxes it's got to be like the jankiest setup ever for moving anything but it's kind of working so i also got one of these dealios it's kind of like a hey let's add a hitch to your bucket kind of thing it means you can move your trailers around and honestly 
I have not tried it on my big trailer, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna see if this thing can actually do anything with the bigger trailer. I actually bent this thing at some point, so I had to come back in here and tune it up. I think I'd probably be better off, let me know what you think, but I think I'd be better off just drilling a hole in my bucket and putting a ball straight onto it. I haven't done that yet. It's so pretty and nice, I don't really wanna put holes in it, but I think I'm gonna do that. So yeah, it's been good for moving my little portable wood collection around. All right, so it's been really handy with this little guy, but we kind of got like the trailer Olympics ready to go here. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens if I try to lift my flatbed or my dump trailer. So basically, it can lift it. It just can't really pull it out of there. It could be partly to do with the fact that I've got a flat tire in the back and the tires are kind of frozen in the ground. But really the truth is, it just doesn't have that back weight. Like it just wants to go forward with that kind of weight. Just for kicks, I'm gonna try a little dump trailer. So same basic deal with the green beast it, it's got some lifting ability but as for actually moving a heavy trailer like that it's just too small i mean look at it so that's the latest on this little yellow devil it might not be the biggest and the baddest of the mini skid steers but so far so good it's the one i've got and i've been making use of it